Hello, future car owners. Now we all love that new car smell, the feel of a steering wheel in our hands, the promise of adventure. But in 2024, picking your next ride is a bit more complicated than just choosing between a hatchback or an SUV. Today, we're diving deep into the battle between electric and engine cars in 2024. Forget the marketing hype, this is about the stuff that really matters, your hard-earned cash. We'll compare everything from running costs to maintenance so you can make an informed decision. Buckle up, it's going to be a bumpy ride. Right, first things first, we're talking about two very different beasts here. On one hand, you've got your classic internal combustion engine chugging away on petrol or diesel. It's the familiar rumble we've all grown up with, but it's also got a thirst for fossil fuels and a knack for spewing out emissions. On the other hand, we've got the sleek, silent electric revolution. These battery-powered beauties run clean, they're quiet, and they pack a serious punch when you hit the accelerator. But, and this is a big but, they come with range anxiety and charging time concerns. So, how do you choose? Well, that's where this video comes in. We're going to break down the pros and cons of each type of car, focusing on the cold, hard facts. We'll look at the initial cost, the running costs, the maintenance, and everything in between. We'll even delve into the murky world of government incentives and resale values. By the end of this video, you'll be armed with all the information you need to make the right decision for your wallet and your lifestyle. Let's be honest, the first thing most of us look at is the price tag. And when it comes to electric versus engine cars, there's a pretty stark difference. Generally speaking, you'll find that electric cars come with a higher initial cost. That's because those big juicy batteries don't come cheap. But hold your horses because it's not as simple as that. Firstly, prices for electric cars are coming down all the time as technology improves and production scales up. Secondly, and this is crucial, you need to factor in the long-term costs. Remember, with an electric car, you're essentially waving goodbye to fuel costs and drastically reducing your maintenance bills. Now, on the flip side, petrol and diesel cars might seem more affordable up front, but they'll bleed you dry at the pumps. And let's not forget about those pesky oil changes, spark plugs, and exhaust systems, all things you can forget about with an EV. So while that initial price tag might sting a bit more for an electric car, you might just find it balances out in the long run. But as always, the devil is in the detail, so let's dig a little deeper. All right, let's talk fuel. Or in the case of electric cars, juice. This is where things get really interesting. With an electric car, you can kiss those pricey petrol stations goodbye. Instead, you'll be charging up at home, at work, or at public charging stations. Now, the cost of electricity varies depending on where you live and what tariff you're on, but it's generally significantly cheaper than petrol or diesel. Plus, you've got the added bonus of never having to queue up behind someone filling jerry cans ever again. But, and this is a big but, there's the range anxiety factor. While petrol stations are everywhere, charging stations are still catching up. And even when you do find one, charging your car takes longer than filling up with petrol. This is where personal driving habits come into play. If you're someone who does a lot of long journeys, an electric car might not be practical just yet. But if most of your driving is short commutes and city driving, an electric car could save you a small fortune in fuel costs. Right, let's get down and dirty with maintenance. This is where electric cars really shine. See, those complicated internal combustion engines are a mechanic's dream. Or should I say, your bank account's nightmare. With all those moving parts, something is bound to go wrong eventually. And when it does, it can cost a pretty penny to fix. Electric cars, on the other hand, are much simpler beasts. With fewer moving parts, there's less to go wrong. In fact, routine maintenance for an electric car is pretty much limited to topping up the windscreen washer fluid and maybe rotating the tires. Of course, electric cars aren't completely immune to mechanical issues. Batteries degrade over time and will eventually need replacing, and that can be a costly affair. But, and this is a big but, electric car batteries are designed to last a long time. We're talking hundreds of thousands of miles in many cases. Plus, battery technology is constantly improving, so replacement costs are likely to come down in the future. So while you might have to fork out a bit more for maintenance on a petrol or diesel car, you might just find that an electric car saves you money in the long run. Now, let's talk about everyone's favorite subject, money, specifically free money. 
governments around the world are falling over themselves to encourage people to make the switch to electric cars. Why? Well, it's all about reducing those nasty emissions and cleaning up our air. So, they're throwing money at the problem in the form of tax breaks, grants, and other incentives. These incentives can significantly reduce the upfront cost of buying an electric car, making them a much more tempting proposition. But, and you knew there was going to be a but, these incentives won't last forever. As more and more people make the switch to electric, governments will start to phase them out. So if you're thinking of taking advantage of these generous offers, now is the time to act. Plus, it's worth noting that these incentives vary wildly from country to country. So it's important to do your research and find out what's available in your area. Okay, let's face it, cars are depreciating assets. The moment you drive a new car off the lot, it loses a significant chunk of its value. But the rate of depreciation can vary wildly depending on the make, model, and, you guessed it, the fuel type. Now, predicting the future of resale values is a bit like predicting the weather, but here's what we know so far. Electric cars have historically suffered from higher depreciation rates than their petrol-powered counterparts. This is mainly due to concerns about battery longevity and the rapid pace of technological advancement in the EV world. However, as battery technology improves and electric cars become more mainstream, this gap is starting to narrow. In fact, in some cases, certain electric car models are now holding their value better than their petrol equivalents. This is partly due to increasing demand for used electric cars as more people make the switch but can't quite stomach the price tag of a brand new one. So, while it's tough to say for sure what the future holds, it's safe to say that resale values for electric cars are on the up. Let's be honest, we can't talk about electric versus engine cars without addressing the environmental elephant in the room. Petrol and diesel cars are notorious polluters, pumping out harmful emissions that contribute to climate change and air pollution. Electric cars, on the other hand, produce zero tailpipe emissions, making them much cleaner for the environment. But hold on a minute, it's not quite as simple as that. The environmental impact of an electric car depends heavily on how that electricity is generated. If it's coming from a coal-fired power plant, then your green credentials might not be as squeaky clean as you thought. However, as more and more renewable energy sources come online, the environmental benefits of electric cars become even clearer. Now let's talk insurance. Because let's face it, nobody likes forking out for insurance, but it's a necessary evil. When it comes to electric versus engine cars, insurance premiums can vary quite a bit. Generally speaking, you can expect to pay a bit more to insure an electric car. This is mainly due to those pricey batteries and the fact that there are fewer qualified technicians to repair them if something goes wrong. However, insurance companies are starting to catch up with the electric revolution, and many are now offering specialized policies for electric car owners. These policies often come with lower premiums and other perks, such as coverage for charging equipment. So, it's always worth shopping around and comparing quotes from different insurers to get the best deal. All right, let's take a step back and look at the bigger picture. We've talked about initial costs, running costs, maintenance, and all sorts of other factors. But which type of car is going to save you the most money in the long run? Well, as with most things in life, it depends. If you clock up a lot of miles and plan on keeping your car for a long time, then an electric car could potentially save you a significant amount of money over its lifetime. However, if you only drive short distances and tend to change your car every few years, then a petrol or diesel car might work out cheaper overall. Ultimately, the best way to determine which type of car is right for you financially is to crunch the numbers based on your individual circumstances. Finally, let's talk about the day-to-day -day reality of living with an electric versus engine car. For some, the idea of never having to visit a petrol station again is incredibly appealing. Imagine simply plugging in your car at home overnight and waking up to a full tank every morning. Plus, electric cars are incredibly smooth and quiet to drive, making them a joy to pilot through city streets. However, for others, the thought of range anxiety and having to plan your journeys around charging stops is enough to give them nightmares. And let's not forget about the time it takes to charge an electric car especially if you don't have access to a fast charger. Ultimately, the best way to decide which type of car is right for you is to try before you buy. So there you have it, folks. 
We've covered a lot today, from costs to convenience. The choice between an electric car and a petrol car is a personal one. There's no right or wrong answer. It all comes down to individual needs and preferences. Make sure to weigh these factors carefully to choose the best car for your needs in 2024.